if you are using OpenAI APIs and if there is a way to reduce up to 98% of your API cost, would you not like it? And that's exactly what Frugal GPT is. In this video, I would like to break down the three step process that is in, introduced in this paper called Frugal GPT. So this is just a merely a paper, but part of this paper is a workflow or an architecture that tells us how to reduce the cost of LLM APIs while also, you know, not affecting the performance because it's very easy for you to reduce the cost, of course, by using open source models while them not being as good as GPT-4. So this paper gives you a three step process, which is called prompt adaption, LLM approximation, LLM cascade. So it's going to use prompt adaption, LLM approximation and LLM cascade to help you reduce the inference cost associated with LLM APIs up to 98%. It's like up to 98% cost reduction while improving the accuracy over GPT-4 by 4% in the same cost. These can help you in two things. One, of course, it can help you in saving your bank balance. I mean, it's no, it's a no brainer that anybody would want to always save money, but also it's good for sustainability and um, you know latency, how fast you can give the response and a lot of other aspects. To get started with, first, let's try to put something in perspective. There are a lot of LLM APIs these days. You've got OpenAI, um, AI21, Cohere, and a lot of these kind of companies are there. And uh, if you have to use an API, any of this API in production, then you are talking about a huge amount of cost. Imagine you are running a customer support service using GPT-4. Let's say company caters to 15,000 customers each month with each customer asking three questions twice a week, total about 360,000 queries per month. And if I prompt average to about 1800 tokens, which is quite um, like a moderate number, the answer is around 8,000 tokens, 80, 80 tokens, sorry. Considering the input, like all these things uh, under the GPT-4 cost, this amounts up to about 21,000. And somebody might easily argue saying that, you know what, um, it's, 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 it's huge amount, you're estimating everything on the upper side. But let's keep this uh, calculation for a moment. How many of small businesses can afford such a customer support, imagine? Especially, if you don't live in a country like the US in a lot of other countries, these numbers are ridiculously high. In fact, higher than like a senior software engineer salary in a lot of countries that makes it really hard for smaller businesses to use large language model APIs for uh, the benefit of AI, like democratizing AI. So that is exactly where frugal GPT is trying to help you because frugal GPT is introducing a new approach. The approach includes three steps or three functions. One is called prompt adaption, LLM, ca LLM approximation and LLM cascade. In a typical LLM usage, what happens? You take the query from the user, you send it to GPT-4 API and get the answer. Very common thing. It's almost like everybody, every micro SaaS builder is doing this thing at the start. But what the frugal GPT is proposed is you do not have to literally, literally take the query from the user and then send it to the models, but rather you can do something. That's exactly what prompt adaption is. And you don't have to literally use the existing GPT-4 in the first place. You can use a combination or a multiple models. And that's exactly what the LLM cascade is going to help us. And we're going to see this in detail. While we are seeing this in the detail, you can see that there is always this discussion about performance and cost related trade-off. You have got open source models that are like very low cost to run, but on the other hand, their performance, like the accuracy is not as good as GPT-4. You can see GPT-4 is the star of the show. So what if you can combine best of both the worlds and then have a cascaded setup that can help you in not compromising a lot on accuracy while also maintaining a good cost or saving a good cost is exactly what this paper frugal GPT is about. So without boring you further, I'm going to take you directly into the architecture of frugal GPT and I'm going to show you certain components, the steps that you have got. The first one is called a prompt selection. The second one is called query concatenation. The third one is called 
completion cache and the fourth one is called model fine tuning and the fifth one is called llm cascade so let me repeat it under prompt ad ad adaption you have got prompt selection and query concatenation these two are part of prompt adaption under llm approximation you have got completion cache and model fine tuning and finally you have got an llm cascade that is the llm cascade part where you have multiple llms and these are the three steps um, technically it's not three steps like five step but overall these are like the three step architecture that uses prompt adaption and llm approximation and llm cascade and as you can see it's not a rocket science by this time you would have figured this out yourself what happens is when you get a prompt from the user instead of sending the prompt as it is directly as it is you send the prompt through a prompt selector now this prompt selector makes the choice about what to send inside the llm api for example if the user is sending like let's say question one answer and question two answer to question three answer three question four answer four that will help the llm answer so you can make a choice your prompt selector can make a choice and say okay maybe you know this llm is capable of answering this question only with two sets of question rather than four set of question that's exactly what prompt selector is doing here prompt selector selects the frugal prompt <laughs> to be honest the the most important prompt while trying to keep the cost down so that your number of input tokens go down and it's while not you know compromising on the accuracy ads also that's what the prompt selector does it and the other aspect is the query concatenation sometimes it's more expensive for you to ask two different questions to an llm with the same context for example if the context is same this is the context this is the context and all you're going to do is ask two different questions why not combine those two different contexts two different prompt and use a query concatenator and set the context with the llm api once and ask these two different questions in the same input prompt that can help you with the number of calls that can also help you with the latency because now you're going to get an an answer much faster than in the previous step where you have got two separate set of questions going separately into llms so in prompt adaption we're going to do two things one is going to create prompt selector second is we're going to use a query concatenator and uh, what is the next one in llm approximation so you can see that we have got completion cache and model fine tuning this is one of the age old techniques that exist in software engineering nothing brain, nothing um, completely radical so what you can do is you ask a question that goes to whatever that chat gpt or whatever api you use the output then comes back to a cache now instead of querying chat gpt or gpt4 api in the first place you always look into the cache and then see oh where there is question before like asked before can i get the response from that cache which is like some kind of database and then give it back to the user when you are watching this video and when you look at one simple question this might look absurd to you i mean how is it possible that two different people would ask the same question but imagine you are an enterprise business or you let's say you are microsoft one of the question that people would always ask is how do i reset this password how do i log into this account this is missing that is missing so these questions at an enterprise scale is highly repeatable and a lot of people might be asking the same question and again and again so instead of making the mistake of making an llm call every single time you can set up a cache that's quite brilliant and what else you can do in terms of llm approximation is exactly one of the things that a lot of companies these days are doing is model fine tuning what you can do is you can first time for the first time you can take the question actually send it to an expensive model but when you get the response you can now fine tune a smaller model and then make that model answer the question so this way the next time you don't have to use the an expensive large language model like gpt4 rather you can use a slightly cheaper version like gptj and these days you have got lot more models like let's say stable lm 
open llama mpt and, and lot of other models available for you to do this fine tuning part and then build that smaller model that caters to your business and finally one of the things that i actually like which is quite again a common sense thing is called llm cascade hey you have got a question why do you have to send it to gpt4 api in the first place i mean you love gpt4 api but you don't have to necessarily ask the question right immediately in gpt4 you can send it to an llm that is less expensive slightly more expensive and then finally the one that is like the most expensive and you can have simple if else rules okay you got the first one if it is an accepted answer then you don't have to go further if it is not an accepted answer then go up in the chain and then find the next answer if it is an accepted answer then you don't have to go further and this is a very simple like might look very obvious it's an interesting step and that's exactly how you can also save money so repeating three different strategies prompt adaptation llm approximation and llm cascade inside prompt adaptation we have got two main things prompt selection query concatenation inside llm approximation we have two different things completion cache and model fine tuning a smaller version and then finally llm cascade where you have got like a cascaded setup to send the query before finally hitting the most expensive api and with all these things with all these things if you see the most interesting aspect is bringing the cost down it's not just that you brought the cost down sometimes it's also possible that you have got a better response for example you have got the financial news and you send it to gpt j and you get the score okay if the score is greater than what you expected then you don't have to send it to any other model the score is lesser than what you expected then send it to the next model and if it is still lesser than what you expected then you send it to the next model which is the most um, most popular or most accurate model and this is something that they have also tried as part of this paper and in some instances they also found out that gpt4 um, was wrong and frugal gpt the the setup that we just discussed was correct so in terms of accuracy the accuracy has gone up than gpt4 while the cost has gone down almost 90 up to 98% i wish i should say up to 98% um because not every time you're going to get 98% sometimes you get 73% saving sometimes you get like 60% savings on different different data set but in every scenario the best individual large language model is gpt4 or here gpt3 and with frugal gpt you could actually save cost and uh, it's even if you can save 50% cost, i i know a lot of enterprises work so hard to save 10 to 20% cost like in every single way that is possible and if your large language model api cost is going to hit $20000 even a 50% saving is going to be massive probably you are up for the next promotion because you'd made a huge saving and you can see all the details all the researches that they have done as part of this paper i really like this paper primarily because it doesn't show you any fluff and it lives up to the title how to use large language models while reducing cost and improving performance while the improving improving performance part could be let's say one off and um, it's it, it may not scale very well but i really think a lot of cost reducing strategies that they have discussed in this paper is quite common sense and a lot of developers do not think about it in the first place and i think this paper has come out at the very right time that it can help you reduce your open ai cost let me know in the comment section what do you think about it this paper will be linked in the youtube description for you to read through it and then share your thoughts with me see you in another video happy prompting